Hello, this is David Diga Hernandez, and you're watching Spirit Church here on the Encounter TV Network. I am now finishing my series on the symbols of the Holy Spirit. Are you suffering with depression? Do you walk around with the weight coming over you? Are you tired of living without the promised joy that God wants to give to you? Perhaps you're someone who wishes that they could evangelize with greater levels of boldness. Well, I want to give you the key to joy overflowing and boldness such as you have never known. I want to talk to you about the new wine of heaven, the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. But first, Stephen Moctezuma is here with me. He's going to lead you in some very anointed worship, and then we're getting right into this message. Let's worship together now. I was ministering in Southern California holding a miracle service. Now, at our miracle services, when the people get healed, they line up and come up to the platform to testify about how God has healed them. I saw miracle after miracle. People came up testifying of 
their blind eyes being opened, their deaf ears now hearing. Some people put down crutches. Some people testified that tumors had disappeared. Others with skin disorders saw that their skin had become perfectly smooth. But one testimony stood out to me, and I don't really know why, but to this day I remember it. A woman came to the platform, and she began to explain to me that for several years she had suffered with a crippling depression. She described how her every day was emotional torment, and she just didn't know what to do to see that breakthrough. But this woman came on the platform and she explained that as she stood there in that worship service, as she called upon the name of Jesus, the power of the Holy Spirit touched her, and she experienced breakthrough. It was a changing day in her life. That depression was turned to joy. And as that woman stood on that platform testifying, she began to laugh. She was filled with a spiritual euphoria, explaining that she now sensed and understood that joy overflowing. Now, the scripture gives us a symbol of the Holy Spirit, and that symbol is wine. Now, we understand that a lifestyle of drunkenness is sin. And we understand that people who live such lifestyles will not inherit the kingdom of God. So why would God use such an unholy thing as a representation for the Holy Spirit? Remember this, the world will always try to counterfeit what God offers to us. The world will always try to provide a cheap alternative to what God has given to us. And this is no different. You see, people drink alcohol, they get drunk, because they want that sense of invincibility. They want that boldness. They want to be that brave person. They want to be that socially outgoing individual. They also drink because they want to experience that joy. They want to experience at least a moment of happiness, at least a moment where their troubles aren't troubling them. And this is why I believe the Scripture gives this symbol of the Holy Spirit to us. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18, the Bible says this, Don't be drunk with wine, because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. So the world has, has that cheap counterfeit in alcohol or wine, and God has given to us the real thing, the real sor source of joy, the real source of boldness, the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. Now, I want to show you something in the book of Acts chapter 2. This is interesting. Those who saw the Holy Spirit's influence on the believers assumed that they were drunk. Now, before I read this, let me make this very clear. I by no means am advocating for belligerent behavior. I'm not saying that the crazier you act, the more spirit-filled you are. In fact, self-control is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. And though sometimes the manifestations of God's power can make people a little nervous, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's not God's doing. So we have to have balance in all things. Sometimes God does things that don't necessarily meet our criteria for understanding. We are left going, why did God do it that way? He has his own way of working. And on the other hand, we mustn't try to force those moves of God, and we must be discerning and making sure that we're not participating in acts of the flesh that degrade the power of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit moves, there's a reverence about it. There's a class and an elegance about the way that the Holy Spirit moves. But look at what the Bible says here in Acts chapter 2, verses 13 through 15. But others in the crowd ridiculed them, saying, They're just drunk, that's all. Then Peter stepped forward with the eleven other apostles and shouted to the crowd, Listen carefully, all of you, fellow Jews and residents of Jerusalem. Make no mistake about this. These people are not drunk, as some of you are assuming. Nine o'clock in the morning is much too early for that. And then he goes on to explain that they're receiving the promise of the Father, which is the power of the Holy Spirit. So what made them think that they were drunk? What made those onlookers look at those believers and say, they're acting and behaving like drunkards? Now, some have suggested that the believers were acting belligerent and silly, but remember, 
The Holy Spirit does not make you senseless and silly. He makes you sharp. What was it they saw in these believers? They were different for sure. They stood out from the crowd for sure. They had boldness to declare those words inspired by the Holy Spirit, and they were filled with joy. So boldness and joy are traits of the Spirit filled. When someone is filled with the Holy Spirit, there's a boldness for evangelism and there's a joy that cannot be taken away. When I am filled with the Holy Spirit, there's a boldness that rises in me and now more than ever, we need bold believers who are filled with the Holy Spirit. Bold believers who will say, I don't care if the world cancels me. I don't care if the world comes against me. I don't care if the world persecutes me or hates me or mocks me or tells lies about me or rejects me. I want to please God, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation. The Holy Spirit will give you that boldness to not care about what others think, to not take into account the opinions of man when you're obeying the Word of God. Yes, we want to be loving, and no, we don't want to be rude, but we must boldly stand on the Word of God and not be moved by any means, not even by a hair's breadth. We must stand firm and boldly proclaim the gospel. Maybe you're one who is using that excuse of a shy personality. Maybe you're someone who says, well, I don't really know if God wants to use me in that particular way. But let me assure you of this. No matter what your personality is, no matter what your preferences are, when you have the Holy Spirit, there's a boldness that comes on you and produces power in your evangelism. Maybe you're someone who lacks that joy. You sense that heaviness on you constantly. Maybe your Christianity is all legalism, and it's performance-based. You check off boxes. I went to church. I read my Bible. I prayed. And you treat those spiritual practices as obligations instead of opportunities to get to know God and to grow spiritually. Maybe you're stuck in that cycle of performance Christianity, of religious thinking, and constantly wondering if you're doing enough to please God. God wants to break you from that too. I think we've made the mistake of accepting this this idea that Christianity makes you boring and dull. People imagine Jesus real quiet and talking real calmly and being real dull and just real serious. Can I tell you something? That's not how Jesus was. Jesus was colorful. Jesus was vibrant. Jesus had an energy about him, a charisma about him, a magnetism about him. And people who were around him, they didn't leave feeling burdened unless, of course, he challenged their sin and they didn't want to repent. When they left Jesus, they left with their burdens lifted. They left with hearts filled with joy and hope. That is how the Holy Spirit works. So stoicism is not spirituality. That seriousness doesn't mean you're spiritual. That quietness and that that demeanor of heaviness does not make you spiritual. Being spiritual is being filled with joy where that joy emanates from your being and becomes contagious. So, just as people receive wine in celebration, so we are to receive the Holy Spirit with gladness. His presence, like wine, marks the occasion. Now, I want to pray with you. I want to pray that the Holy Spirit, that wine from heaven, would give you boldness and joy such as you have never known that God would give you the courage to speak His Word, that God would give you the courage to stand for what is true and what is right, and that God would let that joy overflow, affecting not just you, but your loved ones. Let's pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift that one to you now, who's asking for courage and boldness, who's asking for that joy. Father, meet them right where they are, Holy Spirit, empower them. Fill them with the wine of heaven. And let them be bold carriers of your truth. Let them be filled with joy overflowing. That others around them might experience the magnetism of the Holy Spirit within them. That people see a difference. That people see that boldness. That people see that joy. 
In the name of Jesus, we pray. I want you to say it because you believe it. Say amen. And that is it for the lesson. I want to welcome now the new members of Spirit Church. There you are up on the screen. We love you. We are praying for you. I always say that because I always mean it. Join our online church. Go to davidhernandezministries.com slash spiritchurch. Be a part of this mighty move of the Holy Spirit. In fact, those who go to Spirit Church sometimes will set up Spirit Church locations wherever they are. We have people attending Spirit Church in dorms, in coffee shops, in homes. Be a part of this move of the Holy Spirit by becoming a member of Spirit Church today. And now to your comments, and these comments come from last week's teaching, Symbols of the Holy Spirit, Water. And if you haven't seen that teaching yet, make sure you go back and check it out. If you feel like you need to be refreshed in the Spirit, that's something you're definitely going to want to watch because I talk about the Holy Spirit's life-giving, refreshing nature. While you're at it, be sure you also subscribe. And if you would like me to read your comment on next week's edition of Spirit Church, then go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section right now, and I may read it next week. So here are the comments from Symbols of the Holy Spirit, Water. Makeda writes, Thank you, Brother David. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And thank you, Jesus. I was spoken to at the end. I just want to glorify God and thank you. Hope Bentley writes, I just have to say, I knew Stephen was anointed, but man, that was one of the most powerful moments I have seen of him worshiping. As a worship leader, his worship always blesses and encourages me. Just to see someone worship Jesus with all of their heart is simply amazing and the most powerful. Rena writes, thank you, Pastor David. The power of the Holy Spirit flowing through the phone is overwhelming. This is the second time the Holy Spirit has touched me. God is really faithful, and so are you. Well, this is the Holy Spirit's channel. People can sense His power flowing through the content, and that is why we love doing what we do, because you experience that life-giving power of the Holy Spirit. And finally, Abraham Isaac writes, God is so wonderful. He healed me through David's prayer. That pain in the eye socket was bothering me yesterday, and God moved David to pray for it. Praise God. Yes, even words of knowledge will flow. Sometimes God will speak to me about someone who's watching, and then the Holy Spirit will touch them. These are lives that are being transformed. Now, I want to talk to you for a second. Maybe you've never watched to the end of one of these videos. Maybe you've watched several times, but stick around. I just want you to hear my heart for a second. My heart is souls. We need to win souls. We need to build believers because time is running short. I'm just going to be real with you. Time is running short. We don't know if we're promised tomorrow. And we don't know when Jesus is coming back. So the hour is urgent. I don't want to get to heaven and discover that I should have taken others with me. I don't want to get to heaven and find that there was more I could have done to win souls. Once we enter eternity, the here and now is not going to matter that much anymore. So I want to ask you today, maybe you've watched the content. Maybe you've received. Now is the time to support. We need your help. Help us continue to fund our free Bible school, the Holy Spirit School Online. Help us continue to fund the events that we do all around the world. Help us continue to fund the content that you see coming at you week by week and almost daily sometimes. We want to keep making that difference. Look, it's working. It's working. People are getting saved. Lives are being transformed. And the world is being changed. It's working. Let's continue to do it. Help this ministry continue to go and grow as we fulfill our mandate to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit all around the world through events and media. Go right now today, davidhernandezministries.com slash donate to give a one-time gift or go to davidhernandezministries.com slash partner to become a monthly supporter today. Check out that monthly supporter page, davidhernandezministries.com slash partner and take a look at all of the benefits that you get for being my partner. Think about it like a Netflix subscription or a Hulu subscription. In fact, you can replace one of those with this. Partner with us, $10 a month. You can do it. You can do it. Make whatever sacrifices you need to, but join our army of supporters from all around the world to help continue to produce this content, continue to help sponsor those events, and continue to help fund the Holy Spirit School. Do it today. Don't wait. Don't wait. Just go right now, davidhernandezministries.com slash donate for a one-time gift or slash partner to sign up to partner with me monthly. I'm asking you, do it today. Partner with me. Let's do this. Let's do this together and make that difference. 
Well, that is it for this edition of Spirit Church here on the Encounter TV network. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Also, help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.